Good morning, folks. Thanks for checking back in. It is Sunday, January 7th, and it's a little chilly this morning. It's in the mid-20s. I'm having another issue with my GMC Envoy that I wanted to share with you, and hopefully we can solve the problem. Um, actually, I've got a couple issues. I was out headed out last night for dinner, and my oil pressure gauge started fluctuating pretty sporadically, so I wanted to show you that here on startup. But also... I have yet to pinpoint a what sounds like a bearing noise in the engine compartment. I have already replaced both pulleys, the tensioner pulley and the idler pulley, and the noise is still there, particularly on cold mornings. So let me go ahead and start the motor up, and I will show you what the gauge is doing, and also you'll be able to hear what the motor sounds like. So I've got the car pulled in the in the garage here, let it warm up just a little bit. So what you heard there was the engine noise, and then also showed there the gauge fluctuations. And again, that just started happening last night. After a little bit of internet research um, on a couple of GMC forums, I found out or I read that a potential culprit is the oil pressure switch. So I went to the car parts store, and I picked up a... Uh, Borg Warner oil pressure switch, which looks just like this. Uh, this is for a 2004 GMC Envoy with the inline six engine. And this oil pressure switch is located just above the oil filter on the passenger side, uh, lower passenger side of the engine block. So I'm going to replace this. Hopefully this will solve the problem. <laughs> to install the oil pressure switch, I also had to purchase an oil pressure switch socket, which is a thin walled. Uh, I purchased both of these from O'Reilly Auto Parts. This is a 3 8 inch, uh, 1 and 1 16 inch socket. Uh, what's nice about this one I like is that it has the uh, edges here on the top where you could use a crescent wrench if you can't fit your ratchet wrench uh, in the tight spot. I, I know it's a tight spot just from watching other videos. I haven't tried this myself, but if I need to, I'll be able to use a crescent wrench um, instead of trying to fit a socket wrench into the tight area. And this part was about, I believe it was $10.99. And then the Borg Warner oil pressure switch was $44.99, if I'm not mistaken. Well, it appears I have found the culprit of the erratic oil pressure light. And let me show you what I mean. I've got the car jacked up, and I've got it supported on a jack stand. And took the uh, skid plate off here. Upon initial inspection, you can see what appears to be some pretty fresh oil on the bottom of the oil pan. So I'm going to try my best here to track this up with the camera. So I apologize for the poor view here, but um, you know, going up a little bit, find a little drop of oil on the bottom of the oil filter. And let me see if I can find a better angle of this for you. Looks like there's some fresh oil coming from that, dripping off of the bottom of that, and looks like it is also you know, just from the car moving 
has sprayed onto the power steering lines. So sometimes it can be hard to pinpoint where your oil leaks or, or any fluid leaks are coming. Um, you know, especially when you know the car gets moving and all the fluids are sprayed all over the place. But change that out with the new Borg Warner oil pressure switch that I showed earlier. Um, just check the oil level as a matter of practice and top that off as needed. I'm sure I will need to top it off just you know, judging by how much oil is, is down here. So you've got some fresh oil you know, all the way down here in the bottom of the oil pan and it's kind of you know, leaked all the way back uh, back on a couple of these cross members and you know the uh, front sway bar here it's it's uh, you know, obviously wet there so I'm gonna clean this up get the oil pressure switch changed and then I will hopefully I'll be able to show you how I do this All right, I was able to remove the electrical connector from the plug and I was a little nervous doing that just since it's about 25 degrees outside and I was kind of worried that I was going to break the plastic tab on top of that connector so I was taking my time doing it slowly and I was able to remove that electrical connector from the pressure switch and let me show you how I access that it was a little bit tricky what I did and this is with the the car I put one hand up through here Okay, and then second hand pushed in through the front here, right over the, uh, I believe that's a fuel line or, uh, yeah, I believe that's a fuel line. Reach right over the fuel line and underneath the power steering. And I was actually able just to use just to use my, my thumbs and reach on both sides of the switch on, on the top um, that, that little safety catch is on the top of the switch um, I initially tried to get at it with a small pocket screwdriver flathead screwdriver but again being so cold and, and presumably the plastic was brittle I was a little nervous that I was going to break it so I went ahead and removed it I was able to remove it with my fingers it, it pretty much popped right off but yeah, as you can see there's uh, some oil in that connector um, you know that coupled with all the other evidence of oil on the bottom of the oil pan the front sway bar you know the cross member underneath the engine you know I, I think all signs lead to a, a faulty oil pressure switch so I'm going to figure out how to get that socket on the one and one sixteenth inch uh, deep well oil pressure switch socket and I'll come back and let you know how that goes all right so that actually went on a little bit easier than I was expecting which is always good when you're working on your car let me show you how I got my wrench on the socket is a 3 8 inch socket which is good. Um, yeah, that lets me use a smaller ratchet wrench um, so coming from the side of the car here I just kind of snaked my socket and wrench up this way a little bit you may figure out a better way but this is how I did it and then there is the socket on the socket wrench on the oil pressure switch I'm going to crack this open here yeah, I'm expecting a little bit of oil to come out so I've got some cardboard laid down how much oil came out yeah, just dripping down the side of the oil filter there not a whole lot 
too bad, not too bad. Little pile of oil there, little puddle, not too bad. All right, I'm gonna get this cleaned up. I'm gonna get the new pressure switch ready and get that installed back in. But let's take a look at the old switch here. Be honest with you, I'm not quite sure how to test this uh, to see if it's functioning properly or not. I've I've read you can test it uh, with a multimeter. If you know how to test these, you know, um, to to check their functionality, just leave a comment down below. Uh, I would certainly appreciate it. So again, I'm going to get this this little mess here. Again, not not a lot of oil, but. Yeah, enough. I need to get a couple rags out, so let me uh, get that cleaned up and we'll get the new pressure switch put back in. Alright, I was curious to know how tight to tight th tighten that oil pressure switch. So I pulled out my service manual. I uh, just wanted to share with you what the service manual calls for uh, for replacing the engine oil pressure sensor and or switch. And the removal procedure is quite simple. You raise the vehicle, remove the engine shield, remove the electrical connector from the oil pressure switch and then you remove the switch now, they don't go into detail as to how to contort your arms around the frame and uh, the different parts of the truck to get to it but they just tell you these four simple steps to remove and replace um, but down here uh, is, is what I was looking for I thought it would be worth sharing um, install the oil pressure switch tighten the switch to 15 pound-feet of torque and that's not too much I don't really have any room to get a torque uh, torque wrench in there so I'm just really gonna put it in there hand tight and then just tighten it maybe about a quarter turn with the wrench you know use your best judgment uh, 15 pound-feet is not tight at all one thing I'm gonna do here with the pressure switch before I put it back in you see it's got an o-ring on it and with the gasket on the oil filter I'm going to go ahead and put just a light coat of oil on this. I've got some 10W30 here and I'm just going to put a nice light coat on there just to get it uh, hopefully get some some better sealing on it. So we'll get, get a nice coat on there and get it put back in the car. can't see it from that view but on this side on the back side from the camera view here is the tab that the connector hooks to here so I'm going to get the socket on to be. I'm happy with how tight that is. And just slide the connector back over. And it pop right on. There you go. I went ahead and took a test drive out out of the neighborhood up to the car parts store. The service engine light is on. So I had had the folks at O'Reilly Auto Parts hook their computer up and what they found uh, actually two things one was unrelated but the uh, camshaft position solenoid which I believe is the C-pass uh, solenoid uh, that threw a code which I think may be related to the oil pressure issue uh, the second unrelated issue was a speed sensor in the left front which 
I think is just a wheel bearing hub, so I'm going to have to replace that later, but thanks again, O'Reilly. Just one last quick update. I got back from the car parts store, disconnected my battery, let it sit for a few minutes while I checked the pressures in the tire. I had to fill them up a little bit, but reconnected the battery, started the car back up, and the check engine light, service engine soon light, went off. So I think that solved the problem. Um, I still have to tackle the uh, front left wheel sensor or wheel bearing hub, but that'll be a project for another day. Folks, I think that was a successful repair. So I hope the video was helpful. All in all, it took about an hour and a half to change the switch and about $55, $60 in parts. So again, thanks for checking the video out. I hope it's been helpful.